All right, so this is the video on balls and uh, spheres. All right, so balls and spheres. Uh, the basics. All right, so what's a ball? What's a sphere? So uh, a ball is, um, so a ball is, so this is, a, this, this is the sphere S2, right? So it's two-dimensional because um, you can move, so this is the boundary here. So this is, uh, and then the, then the ball is, um, is you know, the, the, the closed. So if you were to, to have the, the, the kind of the filled in thing, right, this would be D3. Okay, so that's the three-dimensional ball, the three-dimensional disc. It's kind of the, so the boundary of this thing is this. And so the boundary, so we sometimes we write that as D, D3 is equal to S3, S2. So this says that the boundary of the two sphere is, oh, sorry, the boundary of uh, the three ball, nobody ever calls it the three ball, but the three dimensional uh, ball is the two sphere. People do call it the two sphere. Um, Okay, so uh, um, so let me give you uh, the the definitions, right? So uh, so let's give you the definition here. So the n-dimensional ball the n-dimensional ball is the set here, the topological space with the subspace topology of x in R n such that the norm of x, so the two norm is less than or equal to one. So this is the closed uh, ball, okay? Um, so here, what is this? So, uh, so here we're using so the, some notation. So here x, so this is, so I'm doing the two here. So we'll omit this too, but for for the time being. But I just want to be specific for right now. So x two. So this is uh, n real numbers here. Two, and so this thing is the square root of x one squared plus x two squared plus plus x n squared. All right. So that's the this is the this is the usual Euclidean norm on uh, R n. Right, it satisfies the, the properties of a metric. Okay, so this is our first definition. So the other definition is that uh, so the n-dimensional sphere is uh, this this uh, uh, is S n. Okay, so this is the boundary of dn plus 1, which is defined to be equal to uh, the dn plus 1 minus the interior of dn plus 1. So this is the interior of dn plus 1. Okay? Um, so it's the union of open sets contained on the inside of a topological space. Okay? So this thing is also equal to Right, the set of x in R n plus one, so such that the norm of x is equal to one. That's another way to do it. Okay. So uh, another description that that's sometimes used is that. Uh, so another description. That we may make use of in the future, is that. Um, it's this one-point compactification, right? Is that Sn, uh, and so let's put that this is homeomorphic to, right? That's what we'll do, double equals in a tilde. So Rn union infinity uh, with, with the one-point compactification topology. Oh, you can't see that. So the one-point compactification 
Okay, and so what is the one point compactification topology? So let me just, maybe I can just say that real quick. So the one point compactification topology is the following. So, um, so. of let's say uh, x, uh, so this is some random topological space. Okay, so this is equal to x union infinity. And then the neighborhoods, so then you have to throw in some extra open sets, right? And so the extra open sets that you throw in are, um, so, so, so the open sets, so they're equal to the open sets of x plus um, u complement uh, union infinity for, uh, so this is the set of these, for u uh, an open of x. Okay, um, so this is, the, this is this one point compactification. So you can check this is a compact topological space. And then in this, in this exercise, uh, you could show that, that, um, that this is homeomorphic to, to these things. So you should check that all three, th three of those things, are those three descriptions are the, are the same. It's a good exercise. Okay. So, um, all right. So th th these, are, these are our basic definitions. And here is what I want to prove. So here's a theorem. Okay, so the theorem is, says the following. So if C is contained in Rn, uh, it is a convex, compact, uh, is convex, compact, and uh, it has non-empty interior. So this means that there's an open set in the middle, then uh, C, then two things happen. C is homeomorphic to uh, D N, and the boundary of C is homeomorphic to S N minus one. All right. So, anytime you have a con convex compact set with non-empty interior, it is homeomorphic to uh, the, the this this ball. Okay. So, and the boundary is homeomorphic to the sphere. So let's let's remind you what convex means. Right, so convex subsets of R n, right, are. Right, so it has the property that any two points can be connected by a line, right. So for any two x and y in here, the the whole line is contained in, inside. So what's not convex? Well, we could do something like this, right. So here, there's no straight line between these two, right. So that's that's something that's not convex. And the the trick the, there's a quick way of writing these things. So uh, in in terms of vectors, so uh, to to write down the line the equation of the line, right? So we can write x uh, t plus uh, one minus t y, and so this is equal to let's call this uh, h of t. So you'll notice that, that this is a function of t. So t is an element of i, which is zero, the interval 0 to 1. And so this is the, the formula for this line. And I guess it's parametrized so that at 0, it's y. And then at 1, it's x. So this is the parametrization of, of, this, um, of this line. Okay. So this is a quick way of writing this down. All right. So, so we have a convex set. Uh, let's prove this. Okay, so here's the proof. So the proof is that, so the first part says that without loss of generality, um, so let me do this thing, focus, focus semi. Okay, so without loss of generality, um, uh, so we can assume by translation, uh, we get to assume Uh, zero is an element of C zero, and that this is the point, and that this is the point. This has a neighborhood 
around it. Okay, so if not, we just kind of like shift the whole problem over to the origin. All right. Um, all right. So so uh, all right. So this is what we have. Uh, so now, like, let's let's kind of draw the situation here. So here is our. Oh, it's not. That's not quite right. Um, okay. So imagine that's convex. Okay. So here's what we have, and here's zero, right? So this is in Rn, and this is our set C here. All right, and so there's some sort of neighborhood around zero. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to define a map. Uh, so, uh, so we're going to have, uh, okay, we're going to apply the, the, our previous theorem, which was about um, uh, compact, uh, uh, so about, about, continuous bijections of compact Hausdorff spaces actually being sufficient to show that it's uh, a homeomorphism. In general, again, um, uh, uh, by, uh, continuous bijections are not necessarily um, uh, homeomorphisms because the, it, you have to check the inverse. But for compact Hausdorff things, it's very nice. OK. Anyway, so let's define a map. So let's d we define uh, the map here. F, okay, so it's going to go from the boundary of this thing into Sn minus 1 uh, by, oh, so the boundary of C, sorry, the boundary of C to Sn minus 1 by the following, by uh, this, uh, so we'll do F of X is equal to X divided by the Euclidean norm of X, okay, so that's uh, what we'll have. Okay, so this is our the definition of our function. Okay, so for every, all right. So now, what we'll do is is we have. Uh, okay, so now let me kind of just continue this picture. Okay, so, so if we pick some some direction here, v, right, you'll see that that uh, as you go along this vector, um, uh, there's going to be some time. Right, so if you like start in some direction and then, you know, at t is equal to zero, you're here, and then it, it kind of gets bigger and bigger. So eventually, right, it's going to hit some boundary point. Okay. So what I'm what I want to say is that for every uh, v in S n minus one, so there is a time uh, such that uh, t v this is in the boundary of C. Okay? And by convexity, uh, convexity, uh, the T is unique. Right? And so this implies uh, injectivity. Okay, so let me kind of draw the picture again. Uh, if we were in some situation like this, where it wasn't unique, so we went around this thing here, and as we increased time, there was some boundary point and then another boundary point, then these two things wouldn't be connected by a straight line, right? And uh, and that would be not good, right? So so this is like the this is the the bad picture. Okay, so this is um, uh, uh, the the bad situation here, right? So, but we since so, so so we're we're again we're producing a continuous bijection, right? Uh, so since so this is a continuous map. This is continuous and this is continuous, so it's continuous, right? Uh, and so since uh, this boundary here is compact. And the other one is Hausdorff. Uh, uh, and sorry. And Sn minus 1 is Hausdorff. Um, uh, it, then, then F is a homeomorphism. Uh, 
Okay, so that proves um, the second part of our statement. Okay, so our statement was two things, right? We wanted that um, the, the convex set to be isomorphic to the, the n ball, and then we wanted to do the, the boundary of that to be the n minus 1 sphere. Okay, and so we have the n minus 1 sphere statement here. All right, so um, let me, uh, uh, okay, so now let me, let me show you how to extend this to the, to the disk, okay? So we can extend this to the disk. So we can extend, F to uh, F tilde. So F tilde is going to go from C to DN uh, in the following way. Okay. So what we'll do is we write. Okay. So what do we do? So we write. Um, so we we write X is TV, so for V and SN, right? And then uh, in some, some T, T is, a, is a, you know, R greater than or equal to 0. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll send 0 to, to 0, okay? So uh, I guess you could, I want to say greater than 0, but, but, but uh, I guess it doesn't matter. You might have to clean up what I say here, okay? So write, like, write it like this, and we'll do the following. F tilde is going to be defined to be t over, and we'll call this lc of v, and we'll call this v here. Okay, so this is the function that we have. Uh, and here, uh, L, this, this function here, lc of v, so this is equal to the maximum of the set of t's, which are positive reals, right, such that tv is in c. Okay, so this is um, a non-zero number because of this assumption about the disk that we had, so that, that the origin had the disk. Okay, and so this is like where this is the, the the time at which you hit the boundary. So what it does is it just takes, you know, it takes this thing here and then just kind of rescales it um, according to uh, how much time you've spent. Okay, and so um, all right, and so. So, uh, um, okay, and so, so that's, that's the proof of this part. Okay, and so you can check the details of this. Okay, so what is a consequence of this? So one of the consequences is that, um, so no matter what your, what norm you use, so the ball, so if I use the L1 norm or LP norm, right, or L infinity norm, so uh, that all of those balls in, in Rn are going to be homeomorphic. So we could use them interchangeably if we wanted to. Um, all right. So from here, what I want to do next is talk about the, uh, uh, I, I want to talk about the compact open topology. And so this is a way of, of, of making morphisms of topological spaces themselves a topological space. Okay, this will become useful in the future. And I think if we just take care of it now, it'll be nice. But in order to do that, uh, we need to talk about product. We need to review some things about products and uh, a little bit of, 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 of category theory, which I, I just want to get out of the way. Uh, after that, we're going to do the, the we're just going to do some, uh, we're going to talk about functors, which is one of the things that uh, motivates this in the Brouwer fixed point theorem. So, um, so let's uh, try and take care of those, those category theory things so that we can go and, and do this compact open topology. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stop there. <laughs>